Yeah. Blessed and still thankful. Yeah. I've got a verse. Let's share, let's share this verse together. Read it with me. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, give thanks. Not just last week. We had Thanksgiving Day last week, but but the next day, were we still thankful? Is there still something left over from Thanksgiving to be thankful for? Because the Bible says that in everything, in everything, give thanks, not for everything. Some things happen in our lives and we, we forget to be thankful for. Because we look at one side, which is usually our side of something, and we don't have thanks about the part that we see, but in the parts that we're in, there are things that you don't see that you can still be thankful. You can still be thankful for. In your worst days, when you had the worst thing that could happen to you, you can't believe it could get any worse. Be thankful that you're still alive. Because if you've got a life, you've got an opportunity to make this a better day. Tomorrow is a brighter day. We look forward to tomorrow. You've heard that saying, you only live once. You heard that? Don't believe it. You die once. Amen. You live every day. Is that right? We live every day. So we're thankful every day. Because this is the day the Lord has made for every one of us. This is the day, a very special day that he gave us. An awesome day. I, I, I think about every day when I wake up, that's the, a shouting moment just to thank God for waking up this morning and having the opportunity to make today a better day. And God gives every one of us the same number of hours. 24. You get 24. You get 24. You only get 10 because you didn't use yours from last week. <laughs> no, God's still faithful. So what do we do with what God gives us? What do we do with the time that God gives us? Because we have the opportunity to make this day better than yesterday. Make this week better than last week. Make this year better than last year. We finished strong. We finished strong this week. I grew up in the South, as I mentioned, I, and I wrote, to, I would walk to school until I was eighth grade. All the way through eighth grade, we walked to school. Anybody ever had to walk to school? Remember that? Yeah, oh, that's good. What a good crowd. I had to walk to school. Walk to school every day. Now, if it was raining, my dad may take us, if it's raining, but that means we had to get up and go to school when he got up to go to work, which means we'd get to school two hours early. So, I don't want to get to school two hours early, Dad. So we'd walk in the rain. Anybody had to walk in the rain in school? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was fun, walking in the rain. Didn't think anything about it, just walking in the rain. That's what we did. Now if a kid walks in the rain, there's no app for that. But how do you, how do you walk in the rain? There's, I don't know how to do that. How do you figure these things out? Without apps, we did all this without apps. Imagine that, without apps. We, we made it through without apps. Without internet, without dial-up even. We didn't even have dial-up. Anybody remember dial tone? Those, what's a dial tone, Dad? What's a dial tone? Huh? All that stuff. You, we didn't have phone booths. Remember phone booths? Yeah, I had to get us out of those and make a phone call in the booth. Boy, what happened to all that? Life, life keeps moving. But we're thankful that even without all of the things that we have today, we still found reasons to still thank God through everything. We still made it. We made it. Somehow, we made it. I didn't take the bus until I was in eighth grade. Now here's an interesting thing. We went to a new school in eighth grade. We moved from Louisiana, from Mississippi to Louisiana. New school. Now at the end of this day, they had all these buses lined up. And I didn't know which bus to get on. So there were some friends in my class. Jimmy, my best friend. And then there was Stevie. And then, uh, so I asked him what bus did they take? He said, we take Mr. Parker's bus. Okay, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker had an eight-track in his bus, see? And he could play songs. He said, we had an eight-track going in his bus. Anybody know what eight-track is? Come on, give me a hand. All right, eight-track. Yeah, I don't know what eight-tracks are. Yeah, keep living. We might bring eight-tracks back. Let's bring eight-tracks back. You know what? Let's do that. Just, huh? Let's bring them back. No? 
So he had, he had an 8-track in his bus. So I used to like, well, let's take Mr. Parker's bus. And also, they said, Joanne Parker was in our class, and she's a girl that I kind of like, you know, and, and that was her dad's. And she said, that's my dad. That's, he's taking my dad's bus. So I'm not taking Mr. Parker's bus, you know. So at the end of school, I jump on Mr. Parker's bus. Now, let me give you some context to the story. Now, I lived, let, so, so imagine that, that this was, uh, I was in Phoenix, even though this was Louisiana. So here we are, that's it. this is the school right here. We're at 48th Street in McDowell, right? So this is the school. Now, I live like on Central and McDowell, you know, like that way. You know, that's where I went. Mr. Parker's bus. <laughs> so I get on the bus, you know, we, we're going up here. So I got the Apache Junction, <laughs> down through Gilbert and Chandler, Tempe, and then finally, the last place was a Parker's bus was stopped at like 24th Street in McDowell. That's like going to his last stop. So I'd get off and I'd walk home, right? So it took me an hour and 15 minutes to get home after school. Yeah, my mother would say, why did it take you so long to get home? I said, mom, that's just, just the, the bus route, you know? And my mom thought, well, they assigned me this bus, so I was stuck with having to take Mr. Parker's bus. Now, she didn't know there was, you know, Stevie, and Jimmy, and, and Joanne was on that bus, so, you know, so that was, good. that was a good bus. Now, my mother got smart. She saw kids were getting home like 15 minutes after school. And how these kids get here? And you live in the neighborhood, and so she started talking to the kids. She said, what bus you take? They said, we take Mr. Joe's bus. Mr. Joe Winters, Mr. Joe. This Mr. Joe bus was number 22. Okay, see, so we take Mr. Joe's bus. So when I got home that day, my mom said, so what bus do you take? I said, I take Mr. Parker's bus. She said, tomorrow you take Mr. Joe's bus. Oh, that was different, wasn't it? I wasn't happy about that. Nothing to be thankful about that. So, Mr. so here I am. Mr. Joe, number 22, I get on there. Mr. Joe, I get on there. Now, people know there are people that get on the bus. So he says, son, you on the right bus? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, get in there. So we get on Mr. Joe's bus. Now, I didn't know anybody on Mr. Joe's bus. Well, some people are neighbors, but you know, not, not like the other bus. The party bus was Mr. Parker's bus. You know, that was, a, that was the bus to be on. Mr. Joe didn't have an A-track. No. And Mr. Joe was a policeman on the side, so he didn't have no stuff on his bus either. So. So I'm taking Mr. Joe's bus. You know, you get home there, 15 minutes from Mr. Joe's bus. Now, his bus was a direct route. Direct route. So I gotta ask you, as you're going through life, <laughs> as you're doing what you do, which bus are you on? Which bus, which bus are you going on through life? Huh? Are you on the party bus? You got the A-track? You got the A-track on your bus? Are you on the bus with Jimmy and, and, and Joanne? Momo and Boo Boo? Is that the bus you're on? Because that's, that's the bus that you want. I mean, that's the fun bus. But, but, but where you're destined to be, there's a road that's traveled. When you have a hope, we have a future, we have a destiny, you get on the bus that takes you to the place that you need to go. And sometimes it may not be around the people that you know or people that know you or even people that you even like, but there's a way that you need to go and you need to know what bus you need to be on to go where God has for you to go. Sometimes we may just have to change buses. That's just life, isn't it? Sometimes you gotta just, you go in this direction, but, but rather than going all the way around, let's just go and do what God has for us to do. We've been on this bus so long that we're so familiar with going this direction that we don't know if there's a better way. And, and all we're talking about when we come to God, there's a better way to live. There's a better way that God has for every one of us. There's a direct route. And every route will get you there. You see, there's, there's no wrong bus. I want to tell you, there's no wrong place. So I'm not going to say that what you were doing was wrong. Mr. Parker's bus wasn't the wrong bus. It just took me longer to get to where I I want to be. So that's no wrong. You're not a bad person because you, you're on the bus that you're on, but, but if there's a place that you want to be, there's a, if there's a destiny for your life, where changes do you need to make to get you to where you need to be? Is God good or what? Is, that, is God good? Because if you allow him, he will direct your paths. He will tell you what bus to get off. He'll tell you, no, don't, don't go here anymore. But, but God, every day, God said, no, I got another place where I, I want you to go. And that means you have to change some things in your life that you didn't want to change. But that's God. That's life. You make your choices. And in most of our life, we make our choices. 
the early part of our lives. First, well, first our choices are made for us when we're children. Mama makes our choices, daddy makes our choices. You don't have a choice. You go to church, there's no choice, you know. Dad, I'm sick, well you go, you throw up at church. It's okay, you'll feel better when you throw up at church. We went, didn't have a choice. But when we got old enough, we started having our own choice. Then we want to rebel a little bit. We want to make our own decisions, you know. Mama said left, you want to go right just because. You want to make your own decision. Now you went left when Mama was around. When Mama wasn't around, you went the way you wanted to go. Maybe it was just me. We go through that stage where we want to make our own choices. And that's the privilege that we have. But when I was a child, I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. I, I believed as a child. I spoke as a child. But when we become mature, we know there's a better way. And then we have to give up the way that we think. Sometimes there's a better way. And we have to say, I have to rethink. I have to reshape my thinking, accept new opportunities, accept what God is giving, because God has a blessing in what he's giving you. Now, here's the thing about God's blessing. It doesn't come packaged the way that we think a blessing should be packaged. It don't look like what we want. God will give you something and it don't have all the, it's not sugar-coated. It's not warm. Sometimes, sometimes God gives you something you have to look beyond what you see and believe that we, God, I know that and God says do this, but there's got to be something because I don't see it, God, but you have to by faith continue to go in that direction because we walk by faith, not by sight. Right? We walk by faith. That means that we have to walk with God like this. And when you get that trust that God will give you every step along the way, it's uncomfortable to walk with God. Because we want to have knowledge about everything when we walk with God. Yes. We want to know, God, well, just, give me, just give me an idea. Can you just tell me when, God? Sometimes God will give you part of the, the, the solution. He'll tell you when, but not where. Where, but not who. Who, but not how. How, but not why. So we have to keep walking with God until we get the whole plan. Even with our church, there, there are unanswered questions I have. Okay, God, when? God said, just keep walking, just keep walking. But God, who? Just keep doing this. God, why are we doing it? Just keep, just keep walking by faith. This weekend, I had an opportunity to go to officiate a wedding. I do those sometimes. And we went to Heber Girl, Heber Overgaard, right? Yeah. Is that right? Heber Overgaard. Yes, somebody likes Heber Overgaard. We went up there. Now, we were going to go through, those who know have been there, you go through Payson, you know, take the V-line up through Payson, then you get 260, straight on up, you know. But, it was cold, yeah. But here's what, here's what happened. It was cold, snowing, conditions weren't right. But here's what I saw, the most beautiful, amazing scenery. The snow-capped trees, the, the mountains, we saw the, the, the lakes, the, the, oh, the land, the, the deer running across and everything. It was, I must have said a hundred times, oh God, this is so beautiful. I mean, I'm fighting back, I'm driving, trying to fight back. It's like, oh God, this is so, this is so amazing. Now, I would never have gone there. I would never have chosen that. But that happened that I have an opportunity to do that. And it took me out of my usual routine. We got there and, and we had to stay in a, there was a cabin that we were going to share with. There was a, a booking, there was a couple couples going to be in a, on a cabin. Well, guess what? We had the cabin all to ourselves. Beautiful cabin. I mean, and, and we woke up yesterday morning and looked outside. They have like an acre of land, lots of trees. It was like a retreat. Everywhere I saw was a postcard. And I'm walking outside, even though it was cold outside, the sun was shining, and it was just the most beautiful and amazing day. It was, isn't that awesome? But that's God. That's God. Now, the rose comes with thorns, doesn't it? Is, it, is that right? Rose comes with thorns. God, why would you put thorns on roses? No, God says, I put roses among the thorns. Among the thorns you have in life, God has roses among the thorns. Be thankful for the roses. Yeah. Well, don't, but God, with the thorns, if you could not focus on the thorns, you'll see more of the roses that God is trying to give you. 
that rose is everywhere, they're all around you. You have to stop sometime and do what? Smell the roses. So some, some of the thorns. Well, one of the first thorns was we were supposed to go through Payson. Well, as we were going through there, the road closed. So we had to go through Globe, Sholo. So what was known as a little over two hour drive turned into a five hour trip. God says, I'm gonna take you through the city ground. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, I did not mind. As I was going through there, went through uh, Roosevelt Lake, and, and out there, and through the canyon, and Sholo, and, and again, we saw parts of the country and the state I never would have seen. And every time, I mean, the fog would come over the mountains, and it was like, oh, this is just amazing. And then I'd turn the corner, and oh, God, this is great. And I'd go down, oh, Lord, this is awesome. And I told him, Kim said, you know how many times I've said that today? How many times this week have you said, God, this is awesome? How many times have you looked around and saw how amazing anything that God gave you was? How, many, how, how thankful were you this week? Because God gives you amazing every day. He gives you awesome every day. You may miss it, but it's right there in front of you. It should be something that just have to bold you over. You should be able to look out and just see awesome. Just see how awesome God is. Well, when we got there, we, we got to the uh, first place we were going to meet at for the rehearsal, and it was snowing. Okay, it was snowing. And then we got out, and it had like about five inches of snow. And we got to leave. That was me, that's not the car. Anyway, so we stuck, right? So I'm thinking, okay. So, here we are, get, get there, but you gotta push this, this car out here, you know? At first I'm gonna do it, you know, hey, strong man, how do you get in there, you know? <laughs> I'm like, okay, no. So we, we always push the car out, we finally, finally we get out. It's snow, now, I'm cute, I'm in my cute Arizona clothes, right? <laughs> so by the time we finish, I'm like, what is this? What's this? So we go to the place that Kevin was talking about we by ourselves, well, it was winterized. So that means that there was no water and nothing like that. So they said, okay, you gotta go out, you gotta, you gotta turn it on, turn the water on. So, remember the snow was up here. So he's telling me where it is. Say, there's a tree. And about five feet in front of the tree, that's where the key, the thing is, where the thing is, okay, there's trees everywhere. <laughs> Some of them out there in my cute shoes. And I'm trying to, tap, tap, tap. I'm getting snow up, using my foot as a shovel to get, I'm in front of this tree, and I'm like, maybe this tree. And I'm on the phone. He says, no, try the next tree. I'm going to, and I'm, I had to go inside. I had to come back out. And I'm shouting some more, but we finally got it. What I'm saying, with all of that, I'm still thankful. I'm still thankful. Don't let anything steal your joy. Amen. They're going to be thorns, right? They're going to be thorns. Now I look back and I say, you know, we got a little wet, you know, got stuck in the moraine, couldn't find the, the turn on for the water. God, we count it all joy. Amen. Though you go through, and the key is we always make it through. No matter what situation, you always make it through. With God's help, with God's hand, he'll find a way to take you through every situation. If you look back, he has never failed you yet. He has. You can never say God has never failed you. Now, you may have prayed a prayer that did get your answer, but that doesn't mean that God was not still in control. Amen. Sometimes God is protecting us from us. Sometimes the thing we're praying for is a selfish prayer. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. But then the brother says we ask and we ask amiss sometimes. That means God says you, you're asking for your own pleasures, your own desires, rather than knowing what is right and what is pleasing to God. We have every opportunity every month to have a growth track. I talk about growth track. Now when you come to church, you may not know, but you don't come to hear your pastor. Even though it would be wonderful to say, oh, they come to hear me. I know it's not about me. You come to hear what God is speaking through me to you. That's what it's about. That's why this week as I'm preparing, God said, just 
and it's, it makes you nervous. Someone who's prepared all the time, organized, you want to know. Someone be able to say, okay, now let's go to the next slide and go here. Because I prepared that for everybody. But God said, just, just get there, and I'll, I'll tell them what I want them to hear. That means I have to step aside. I have to know that it's not about me. The praise band has to know that it's not about them. Is that right? Amen. And as soon as the praise band is no longer trying to play for you, and so I'm playing for him. He shows up. And as soon as you come and you not want to be served, but want to serve, he shows up in you. Amen. Because if you don't like a song, the song is not about you. It has nothing to do with a song that you like. As soon as the first note is played, you should already be opening your heart and say, God, thank you, Jesus. Start finding a way to give God praise and honor and glory. Yeah. Not because you like the music. It's not about you liking the music. It's about coming here because this is the place. This is the place. We come in to be in the presence of God. Amen. And the Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. Which means that God don't show up until we start opening up and allowing Amen. praise to be released. Amen. All right? Yeah. But I put it up in another term. Those who work out, uh, I know that when you work out or when you run, there's something that your body starts creating called endorphins and encephalins. In other words, there are chemical re reactions that happens in your body as you work out. And when you work out to a certain level, those reactions now produce results, okay? That means if you don't work out to the point where your body starts producing these reactions, you don't get a result. You can go to the gym and feel good about going, but the point is you gotta work to a threshold and push yourself until the change starts happening. And the change don't happen because you went to the gym and you sit down and you just, you know. <laughs> you know, a couple of ways you go, you're not, you'll never get there. You'll go to the gym forever and will never get the result. But when you go in there and you start lifting, you get ugly, you know, and you're straining and you're sweating, huh? You're like pushing hard, trembling. You, you finish and you know you've worked out that day. The next day, you know you've worked out. How do you know? Because you're sore the next day. When you have given your all, you know it. There's no way you could ever give your all and not get something back from it. When you come in here to give God your all, I promise you, your whole life will change. It's not what you're receiving. It's all about what you're giving. It's all about what you're giving. I can preach the, the best sermon ever, and if you are not there to receive it, you'll miss everything about it. You'll say, how much longer? <laughs> but if you really are coming and you're open, God starts speaking directly to you. If you open up and you're ready to receive, God, you'll say, he prepared this. He is speaking directly to me. Exactly. You ever had that happen? Yes. You come in here and, and suddenly it's like, he is reading my mail. <laughs> he is right there. How does he, honey, did you talk to, did you, did you tell him? Did you tell him? I think so. But somehow God knows what you need to hear. Listen to what God is telling you. Don't leave out the same way that you came. Push yourself. Go to that next level. With the growth track, we talked about that. This today, we talked about knowing God today. Some of us have probably been going to church all of our lives and never have sat down and really got to know who he really is. Who he is. You know about God, but sit down and know when you pray, how do you get a, how does God hear your prayer? What are the conditions of answered prayer? We're going to talk about that today when you pray. How do you talk to God? I don't know how to pray, Pastor. I don't know. You know, I just pray that we have, when you learn that there's a way that God wants to hear you pray to him. And you don't have to be eloquent. It's not about praying the way that you hear me pray or someone else pray. Right. When you're praying to God, God's not listening to your mouth and to your head. He's listening to your heart. Right. And when you start speaking from your heart, you speak differently. Right. Some of us don't know how to speak from our heart. We know how to, we, I give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> we know how to do that. You say, I give you a piece of my mind. But give a person a piece of your heart. That's different. Right. When you start sharing from your heart, people listen differently too. They're not hearing what you're saying. They, they're feeling it. They, they, they're understanding that you're speaking now from a different way. When you start speaking that way from your heart, now you interpret it differently. You can't say things wrong when you're speaking from your heart. 
When you speak from here, you can say things wrong, you can get misinterpreted, but from your heart, there's no wrong way of saying things. I don't think there's anyone here that can offend me. Because beyond what you say, I know your heart. That's what I'm listening for. Now, I want to share this with this. If I ever offend you, count it to my head, not to my heart. And I'll probably offend every one of you at some point. <laughs> I want to say right now, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Because none of us are perfect. All we are are forgiven. You know, can you help me? We just forgive them. There's nothing that makes any one of us better or deserving or worthy. We all have a past that we don't want anyone to know about. We try to appear our best in here. But the Bible says even our best are as filthy rags. We're not worthy. God forgives us. He looked beyond all of our stuff and he still sees halfway through, you know, first thing you do is you look up, because it's not a tear until they fall, <laughs> so you look up. <laughs> yeah, and if you blink, if you blink, you know it's over, you know.
take pride in your church. Take pride in your church. Amen. This is not the church. It's not, it's not your church until you say, this is my church. This, this is your church. Now, here's, here's what makes it your church. And, 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 and first of all, did you notice the, the uh, yeah. counter out there? Is that a beautiful counter out there? Can you walk in? Oh, come on. How did you not see that? Now, Rob, Rob, thank you. Rob, this is Rob's handiwork over here. This is Rob. This is Rob. Thank you. As we were doing that, we, we put these, these boards up, and we had to stain some of them. And I says, I look at it and said, Rob, you're getting your fingerprints all over these things, man. I'm putting the stain down, and he had to, you know, he had to stain them, he's getting his fingerprints on them. And I'm thinking, isn't that, isn't that God, though? Your fingerprints should be all over your church. Amen. The praise, man, your fingerprints are all over this. You know, that your fingerprints are all over. The praise, your, if you were, the, that's evidence that they were here. <laughs> Sam was here. You don't need CSI. Just need to know Sam was touching the mic. And your fingerprints are all over. Your fingerprints should be all over your church. That should be something that you're touching so that God can touch you. Evidence. Is there enough evidence? You can say you're a Christian, but is there enough evidence? evidence. Are you have fingerprints? Are you, are, you, are you doing? Are you are you putting yourself there where God can, can say yes, this is where you were. Your fingerprints are there. Wow. Father, thank you. Thank you for your words today. Thank you for your blessing today.